Greetings everyone, it is I, Frost Gamer, coming to you again with Death Battle. Now, it's been a while since I did a video, mostly because uh, I've been doing other stuff. Huh? My own projects, my own game thing, thing ideas and all that, but <laughs> of course I got my own job, so. But, that's going to be made up today. See, as you can see, see, there's new Death Battle episodes, and, well, everybody knows that by now. <laughs> there's no reason we tell you. So, I'm gonna try and catch up, you know, before the next Death Battle. And starting off, we're gonna start with a, a personal, oh, I know one I should've done, done hours ago, days ago, or, Months ago, actually. <laughs> right. This is Sephra versus Virgil. Two of the most overpowered, high level, intense bosses is in their respective games. Now, both of these, these characters are are the more eviler side of of the main hero. So with Virgil being the more or destroy all, all order in a sort of bit. Yeah, Dante, well, Severoth, the uh, eviler, or side of Cloud. Cloud and it's literally, well, the polar option, let's say that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I have really worked hard not to get spoiled on these battles. So. I hope you all enjoy your work and and if you're hearing birds, uh, that's my grandma's pet birds. So let's begin, shall we? This is Sephiroth versus Virgil. Let's enjoy. Oh, for the love of God, why? Hi, Luke. Send a message to all those that. Philosopher Plato once said, the measure of a man is what he does with power. But to these guys, power is the measure of a man. Sephiroth, the fearsome one-winged angel of Final Fantasy. And Virgil, the half-demon son of Sparta from Devil May Cry. Mm. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death <laughs> battle. Through the millennia, legends were passed of a source of unlimited energy, the Promised Land. Unfortunately, all hope of finding this sacred ground had been lost, until the Shinra Electric Power Company excavated the remains of a being believed to hail from the very land they sought. They called this weird naked purple lady Genova and thought that if they could bring her back to life, she could help them find the Promised Land. But apparently, they just didn't have any phoenix downs. If they couldn't resurrect a being who could lead them to the promised land, Shinra decided they would simply create their own. After many experiments infusing Genova's cells with those of a human's, they finally found their savior. His name was Sephiroth. Jeez. With hair like that, it's no wonder he was created in a lab. Look at how majestic that mane is. According to Final Fantasy mm -hmm. lore, Sephiroth has to use an entire bottle of shampoo and conditioner every single time he bathes. Why do you know that? Did you join his fan club or something? Uh, for research. Uh, but Shinra wasn't interested in Sephiroth mm -hmm. for his hair. Instead, he was an essential part of their soldier program. Wait, wait. This electric company has their own private military? I'd hate to miss a payment with those guys. Especially if they sent Seph after me. I mean, look at the ridiculously long sword he keeps with him. That's his Masamune. This seven foot two behemoth of a blade is a lot like the Nodachi swords they used back in feudal Japan. But instead of wielding something long with two hands like those, Sephiroth only needs one. Even that speaks nothing of his effectiveness as a warrior. Yeah, you know when people spread legends of someone, they usually make him out to be even better than he really is? It's the total opposite with Sephiroth. With his superhuman speed, strength, and durability, 
Sephiroth was instrumental in ensuring Shinra's victory in the Wutai War, conquering the last free nation on the planet. He returned home a legend. But all those warm, fuzzy feelings of victory didn't last long. While on a mission to the town of Nibelheim, Sephiroth found a bunch of books on the Genova Project. That's when he discovered he was a secret science project the whole time. The truth crushed Sephiroth and drove him mad. In a rage, he annihilated Nibelheim, but was stopped by a mercenary named Cloud Strife. Sephiroth was impaled by the Buster Sword and fell to his death. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Which is what I would have said if Sephiroth hadn't dropped into a hole in the ground that led him to the giant Windows screensaver called the Lifestream. The Lifestream is a very river of energy which basically maintains life across the planet. Normally, merging with the Lifestream is the equivalent of entering the afterlife, but not for Sephiroth. And this is where things get weird, so buckle up. Still conscious, Sephiroth's essence floated through the life stream for years until he absorbed enough energy to rebuild his body. With the energy of the life stream, he could control other beings with Genova cells. Including the corpse of Genova, who he manipulated like a puppet and disguised as himself. Oh, what the hell? That's his mom? Who would do that to their own mom? I mean, I know she's a genocidal alien monster, but come on. Probably yeah. makes a good breakfast. But Sephiroth's descent into the life stream offered him even more. It transformed him from a mere super soldier into the most dangerous being on the planet. He's strong enough to throw a man hundreds of feet skyward, move at supersonic speeds, and withstand brutal stab wounds through vital organs. He's got illusion powers that can trick people by creating an entirely fake scenario. He can lift people with his mind, including himself, and then he can just fly! So it worked, right? Additionally, Sephiroth can cast magic thanks to his on-hand materia. Materia is crystallized life energy which grants different powers according to the type of material used. These are natural a super person again. Fire, lightning, oh, ice, and earth-based magic. He can block attacks with barrier and reflect and heal himself with cure and regen. And ever since jumping into the life stream, he's had unlimited access to his magical powers. With his new godlike abilities, Sephiroth began a plan to stop mankind from drying up the planet's life force. That doesn't sound so scary. Does that mean he's an environmentalist or... But to do this, he decided to use black materia to summon a giant meteor to destroy the planet and absorb all of its life energy for himself. So like an opposite environmentalist. A planet vampire. I mean, we're talking about a guy who kicked a dude through solid concrete, murdered the crap out of a 30-foot serpent with a spike through the face, and tanked a dragon's flamethrower attack without even getting a teensy bit hurt. A particularly impressive feat considering this attack was capable of one-shotting fellow soldier Zag Fair. Uh, Wiz, you may need to up your prescription, because that's definitely Cloud. No, 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 Cloud was just recalling false memories there. It was really Zack. However, it was Cloud who impaled Sephiroth three livestream with the Buster Sword. And holy God, is it huge! It's like two feet wide! You'd think a stab from that thing would just cut him in half. But Seph just kind of shook it off. And in his rematch with Cloud, he blocked an attack strong enough to crater the metal around him. Considering the diameter of the crater, the surface area of Sephiroth's feet, and assuming the most likely steel composition, I estimate this attack to equal nearly 1,600 tons of force. Sephiroth can use that wicked sword to stab and lift wannabe heroes by their ribcage, slice through skyscrapers, and shoot energy beams that can shred these huge Mako cannons. And from the life stream, Sephi figured out he could create new bodies or even take on other forms. These forms greatly resemble certain creatures found in Christian and Jewish mythology. He certainly looks the part when he goes into his ultimate form. Regardless, Sephiroth does possess a single black wing, a blatant symbol of his fall from grace. So basically Final Fantasy does everything it can to not be subtle. Just like Sephiroth's most devastating attack, Supernova, which decimates an entire solar system. Wait. Zeph is that powerful? How does anyone ever beat him? Don't get the wrong idea here. There's a lot of debate over how Supernova actually works, but I think it's pretty clear that Sephiroth isn't creating the explosion himself. Rather, he's transporting his foes to a specific point in time within an alternate dimension. Careful, Wiz. Don't sell him short. Just look at it. When he uses the attack, reality literally crumbles away like glass. This is identical to the animation for certain summoned creatures. According to the official Crisis Core Complete Guide, 
summons draw their targets into their own space in order to attack. And this is no different. In the Dissidia of Fighting Games, Severoth goes for the simple approach and opens a dimensional hole to the explosion. The attack is even described as sending destruction even into other dimensions. And if he could summon planet-busting meteors at will, why did he go through so much trouble to get the Black Materia, which literally summons meteors? That would explain why the supernova doesn't hurt him. He's not really there, just using those illusion powers of his. With all these powers, I can't believe Cloud and friends were able to take him down. He's not invincible, but he's damn powerful. Ever persistent, Sephiroth departed with a final chilling promise. I will. Never be a memory. Why does he sound so bored? <laughs> Two thousand years ago, a great mutiny transpired in the underworld. The demon warrior Sparta rebelled against his evil master, Mundus. To protect the world, Sparta did his best to seal the connection between Hell and Earth. But then Sparta got lonely. Or maybe it was just a sausage fest in there. Either way, he snuck out of Hell long enough to knock up this chick named Eva. And she popped out a couple of awesome demon slayers. Nice choice. You may remember the younger of the two, Dante. Oh yeah, he bought that witch chick with the hair. But the Bad eldest time. and potentially deadliest brother was the one and only Virgil. <laughs> Virgil and Dante were rivals from birth. Dante was a goofball. Virgil was serious. Dante hated his being a demon, and Virgil loved it. It's that classic odd couple scenario. But then one fateful day, in an act of vengeance against the late Sparta, a group of rogue demons separated the two brothers and killed their mother. Virgil was believed to be dead. But in reality, Virgil survived and set out on his own path to seek his father's immense power for himself. And he's 100% equipped to be a butt-kicking demon slayer just like his pups. As a half-demon, Virgil can jump several times his own height, move at supersonic speeds, and heal himself quickly, kind of like that Wolverine guy. He can tough out getting stabbed through the lungs, intestines, the heart, body parts I'm pretty sure most people need. Not if my experiment has anything to say about it. You say something, Wiz? I said not if Virgil's abilities have anything to say about it. Well, sadly, for any human demon or human demon who gets in his way, Virgil also happens to carry some extra deadly weapons on hand, including a spivy katana called Tomato. Yamato. Eh, Yamato. it's said that this sword <laughs> can cut through anything, even dimensions, and probably tomatoes. Actually, Yamato is the exact thing Sparta used to seal hell from Earth in the first place. Virgil's sword fighting prowess draws yeah, from his great. Dark Slayer and fighting style, which up. emphasizes oh, teleportation, oh, cool. lightning quick nice. movements, and even quicker slashes straight from the sheet. This technique is directly influenced by Iai Jutsu, the real-life Japanese art of the quick draw. And thanks to Virgil's demonic powers, he can attack so fast the blade seems invisible. Yeah, the only thing better than fighting with one sword is fighting with eight! With Virgil's ghostly summoned swords, he can turn himself into a living Beyblade, fire them like a machine gun, or make it rain! Blades may be Virgil's bread and butter, but if he needs to focus on brute strength, he switches to Beowulf. He can charge up blink of an eye punches and kicks that hit like a cement truck made of lead and KO some of the toughest demons in just a few hits. And hey, looks like he takes three more. There's one more trick up Virgil's sleeve. Thanks to his demon blood, he can access a form known as Devil Trigger. And this mode amplifies everything. His strength, speed, and healing all get a huge boost, making him several times deadlier than before. Yes. Plus, he just looks badass! In his quest to become as powerful as his father, Virgil's abilities skyrocket. He's taken down dozens of demons in the blink of an eye, and escaped an illusion from the sorcerer Arkham, which makes normal people go crazy. But if anything's gonna show off what a son of Sparta can really do, it's pitting him against his bro. Sure, Virgil can easily avoid Dante's bullets, but why dodge them when you can spin your sword, line them all up, and fire them back? Like a boss. In the same battle, they briefly created a 12-foot diameter open space in a heavy rainstorm with nothing but their sword swings. On average, storms can fill a cubic foot space with as many as 30 raindrops. So, Virgil and Dante must have destroyed 108,000 raindrops in less than a second. If Virgil can swing his sword that fast, I bet he'd make a killing mowing lawns, or chopping meat at the deli, or giving haircuts. 
part doing that thing where he chops bad guys to pieces so fast they don't even realize they're dead yet. Like when he fought Beowulf. The monster, not the weapon. And then he punched him so hard he flew 55 feet up and hit the ceiling. When comparing Beowulf's size to Virgil, he appears to be as large as an elephant. Given what's available, this seems like our best measure of Virgil's strength, but there is one issue. The Devil May Cry series makes frequent use of slow motion to depict the absurdity of these characters, and this could be a similar case. So let's look at another slow-mo feat, the rainstorm fight. At one point, the rain freezes in place for about two and a half seconds as Virgil and Dante keep moving, indicating a 14,500% speed increase in real time. Applying the same degree to the Beowulf punch gives us an acceleration speed of about 4,882 feet per second. With that in mind, we can apply our previous data to deduce the maximum height sand ceiling and determine Virgil's striking strength to be nearly 720 million newtons of force. <laughs> That's a lot! It matches Virgil's incredible toughness, too. We already mentioned his super healing factor, but it's even more overpowered than you think. Virgil once got completely cut in half, but healed so fast that it's impossible to even notice. And his regeneration ability can be worn down. Yeah, that's how this weird jester guy beat him. But it takes a lot to pull off. And Virgil can always just use Yamato to hop through dimensions to get away if he wants. Sadly, Virgil never got to rule the demon realm like he wanted. Instead, the demon king Mundus permanently transformed Virgil into his puppet, irreversibly manipulating his mind in the process. And then Dante kind of, uh, exploded him. But one or two losses against someone who's basically goddamn Satan hardly makes him a weakling. Hell and Earth trembles before the power of Virgil. It'll be fun to fight with the prince of darkness. If my father did it, I should be able to do it too. The combatants are set. Let's end this yeah. debate once and for all. But before we get to the bloody slicing and dicing, pick up some blue apron and slice oh and dice God. in your kitchen. No blue apron. Yeah, I'm blue that. apron's goal is to make incredible home cooking accessible to anyone. And it can, because it's the number one. Okay, uh, let's uh, skip this a little bit, shall we? Anyway, hey, not sure who's going to win this, but... Uh, it's gonna be awesome to Blue see. Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! <laughs> okay, Virgil. Okay. Yeah, it's not working out of nowhere. Lovely. You are powerful. I can see it. Who are you? Your despair. Oh. 
Oh no. What is that? Super Nova. Mm -hmm. I saw you that pierce the fabric of our dimension. So I cast an illusion to disguise this. Witness oblivion. No. to who several versus Virgil not much reaction I suppose since I barely talk much <laughs> guess that was me being speechless <laughs> yeah yeah that was stupid anyway hey uh definitely was a great fight I definitely am amazed with if how good their 3D fights can be. And can safely say, well done. <laughs> Screw attack, well done. Where's Boomstick? Do not change. And please accept one of my death bow ideas. Oh, or more than half? Come on, I got some good ones. Oh, don't be picky, don't be beggy. Alright, well, that's it for today, hey, I suppose. But I will be posting more than one video this time. Like I said, I got a lot of catching up to do, so I'll stay tuned. <laughs> and thankfully, I'm on some, some vacation time, so that's not going to be a problem. 
I'll be able to catch up on Death Battle and such. So, this is Fox Gamer, everyone. I'll see you all next time. And please, keep on gaming. See you, gamers.